<laughs> okay, so we're going to get ready for our last few speakers. Uh, the first of which uh, will be the VP of Ticket Sales at uh, the Sacramento Kings. Okay. I've known this guy for a little bit, and he's been great yeah. to work with. And that would be Phil Horn, who has a concept of, which is really called 3.0, sales 3.0. But here's the thing. He had to update his PowerPoint before he got here, so it should be 3.1. So without further ado, Phil Horn. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I feel like it should be like sales 2.0 because I'm using a PowerPoint. Uh, I'll give everybody kind of a minute to just settle in here. Who's seen the naked gun here before? Come on. The naked gun? Anybody? It's not that young, right? So I just wore this into the bathroom. Do you guys remember that scene? Anybody? No? All right. I, had, I had a moment of like, oh my gosh, did I leave this thing on when I was in the bathroom? Uh, so, so sales 3.0 um, is something that has become near and dear to, to my heart and, and hopefully the folks in Sacramento. Um, we are a, a team that's big on technology, and this was certainly born from that. But before I get started, who in here has a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop? Everybody, right? Uh, this is going to be your lucky day in that presentation that I actually encourage you to take it out. Uh, put it on your, on your table. Feel free to use it during the presentation. You don't have to look at me. You can stare at your smartphone if you want. Because hopefully you're engaging with some of the material, some of the things that we're talking about during uh, Sales 3.0. Okay, So please, take a moment. Get, if you have it in your pocket, put it out. Put it out, because I'm going to encourage you guys to jump in there in a few different areas. All right. So sales 3.0 for us is, is not something we invented, um, although when you see my next slide, um, we, we try and claim it, and I'll, I'll show you why. But it was born from some frustrations that we had. And those frustrations are things you've heard about all throughout the day. And I'm actually really excited that this is becoming a really big topic uh, in our circle, in our industry. And for us, it, it was what you, you kind of heard earlier with, with Al and, and Paul kind of talking about a little bit, with the, the cold calling and the traditional measurements of activity. We, we were struggling with this. We were doing a lot of these traditional tried and true methods and getting very, very little return. It was driving us crazy. Not only was it driving us crazy, but it was driving our sales team crazy. They hated it. Who in here likes it when your, your manager, or as a manager, has to go talk to a rep about how many calls they've made, right? It sucks. It's absolutely terrible because, one, those calls are incredibly inefficient, right? But we just kept charging through. No, no, like, this is how we do it. Like, they got to make 100 calls. Like, this is proven. This is going to be successful. And we just kept banging our heads against that wall, banging our heads against that wall. And what happened is we started to have a lot of um, upset reps, unhappy reps. They didn't like the culture. They didn't like, they didn't like what was happening because it wasn't fun for them, right? They could sell. They had, they had skills and they had natural ability and, and great attitudes, but the way we were making them sell was depressing. It was boring to come into work. And what we kind of realized was if we wanted to keep people, if we wanted to get good people and, and hire and find the best, we needed to change the way we were doing things. And that's really where Sales 3.0 came from. And I, as a, as a manager and a leader in the way I knew how to do things, I had to do a complete 180, and it was really uncomfortable, but we went both feet in, right? It wasn't like, let's try this. It was like, we're going to do this, and here's why. And we heard all kinds of uh, we, we did our research, and we looked at it first to make sure we were, we were making a sound move. And this was the trend. This is where people were going. And we knew that if we did this right and we believed in it, we went full force into it, we were going to start to get better people. We we're going to keep our best people. And the, the culture, the mood on the floor was going to be better, which was going to result in better, better revenue numbers for us, right? So we formed Sales 3.0, and it's, it's three-tiered. And I said we didn't invent it, but it does spell SAC. So I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Uh, so it's three-tiered, right? And this, this is um, three different things that are, are really important each individually. I'll kind of walk through each one quickly. So social, this is something you've heard about throughout today. Social selling is a big deal right now, right? And this is done in a variety of different ways, whether it's the LinkedIn's or the Twitter's or whatever. But the way, what we found out is the way people wanted to buy was the same way our sellers wanted to sell. And that was in a social way. They wanted it to be a social experience, right? It was less of a turn and burn. People want to be educated. People want to find material before they make a decision. And social selling was a way that we could accomplish that, and a way that our reps actually have loved to sell. So not only was it the way people want to buy now, as, as Al said, when's the last time you bought something via the phone? I can't 
tell you the last time I bought something, not even just a cold call, but like made an outbound call myself to buy something. It just doesn't happen anymore, right? I buy things either in person or through this social experience. I shop on Amazon almost every day, right? And I'm looking at buyer reviews. That's a, sh that's a social experience. This is how people buy today. So let's let our seller sell that way. Accelerated being the second key point, the second pillar of sales 3.0. Um, this goes kind of above and beyond social, and this is really the idea of giving your, your, your team tools to accelerate what they do. And this is beyond even just LinkedIn and Twitter, and we'll talk about some of those tools in, in a minute, but ways to make them more efficient, ways to allow them to do things faster, and maybe even in a more fun way than they've traditionally done, right? So that's accelerated. And then the third thing is collaboration. And this sort of is a byproduct of all of these other things, right? We look for tools and we look for ways for our, our staff to share with each other the successes and what's happening, what kinds of what types of tools they're using, and how they're using them to be most successful. Every morning, we have a, a huddle. We bring our entire team, which is 60, 70 deep now, together, and we talk about successes from the day before. One of the things we talk about is, you know, hey, who was on LinkedIn yesterday? What, what, what did you do? Why did it work? How did you find that person? Right? We collaborate. We have tools that allow us to share across our, our network in the cloud. Right. So we can see what kinds of email templates and things like that are working best, and we'll talk about some of those tools. But collaboration is big. Gone are the days of, uh, who's seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? We talked about that earlier. Somebody had that in their, their slide. Remember the, uh, the Glenn Gary leads, right? Like everybody wanted those leads. They're mine, they're mine, they're mine. Gone are the days of there's only so many good leads out there, right? And gone are the days of I'm not going to share my trade secrets with everybody else. What we found is that through collaboration, Everybody wants everybody else to succeed. And, and we kind of practice this law of abundance, and there's enough out there for everybody, right? And we actually want each other to make each other better. And we grow and we get better together as a result of that versus having a bunch of lone wolves on the team who kind of just want to hide in their silo and not share why they're being successful or how they're being successful. It's not like you're the only person who's ever conducted a Google search and like you own the, the you know, patent on how to do that, right? Like let's share it with each other. And from that, somebody else is going to take it one step further and then somebody else is going to take it one step further. We're all going to get a little bit better. So collaboration is a big piece of this. So social accelerated collaboration, that's sort of my definition of sales 3.0. Uh, there's a bunch of tools out there in that toolkit. And this can be really overwhelming. Right? Like, where do, you, where do I start? You guys heard about LinkedIn today. I'm sure you're, you're familiar with Twitter. Uh, if, you, if you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, do it right now. That's why you get your phones out. Find me on Twitter, at Phil Kingsticks. Uh, this is that collaboration, that sharing environment. I want, I want to share with you guys. I want to see what you're doing so we can share back. But it can be overwhelming. There are so many tools out there. I bet you're looking at this list and you're like, I don't know what the hell that is, man. What, what is one mob? I don't get it. Right? So where do you start? Where do you start? So what I wanted to do today is just share with you some of the cool tools that we've looked at. And to really implement Sales 3.0 or, or any kind of social selling or big shift in your sales environment, you as a leader or a top sales rep have to be completely bought in. You have to be using those tools yourself. You can't just say, hey guys, I heard about this cool tool, go check it out. You have to be the one out there championing it. You have to be the one using it. So I've tested all these myself before I introduce them to my staff. I've tried it, right? I've talked with the owners of a lot of these companies that try and sell us new technology. I've had them demo it. We've had them come out on site. Like, we do our due diligence before we roll these things out. And then we give it to our staff. And of course, they, they figured out better than we ever did. But at least we knew how to walk the talk a little bit before we say, OK, this is how you have to start selling, right? We tried it ourselves. So one of the, the things that comes with this whole environment of sales 3.0 too, and we talked about a little bit earlier, is like, well, how do you rate people for this? And at the end of the day, revenue is, is king, right? Revenue is king. But we always still are looking for that, that sort of um, justification of people maybe who aren't hitting their numbers. Well, are they doing all the right things, right? So we've had a shift to an entirely new set of metrics. And somebody asked in one of the earlier sessions, well, how do you measure people with LinkedIn and Twitter and all these things? We found ways to do it, right? We, we create our own. Um, activity scores for people. The one you're looking at up here um, is actually from LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn publishes this thing called the Social Selling Index, which you can get if you subscribe to their Premium Sales Navigator. Um, they'll, they'll give that to you for your team. We've taken that and added that into a formula that we use, but we actually kind of created our own, form, our own formula based on how often they're using the search tool, how many connections did they make, how many in-mails did they send. We want to look at all these things to see if somebody's being active. So now we use this as a measurement tool to make sure somebody's doing the right things. We have similar stuff for Twitter. Uh, we use this thing called Hoopla, which I think some of you guys use. It's like Sports Center for your, your sales efforts. We have um, email engagement on there now. We have um, tweets and things like that are scrolling through our Hoopla to see how often people are using all these tools. And I could care less if everybody's using all of them. 
I could really care less if anybody's using any of them, but the point is you're giving your staff something new that's going to excite them, right? And we talked earlier about how, how to manage millennials and how do we uh, sort of engage the, these, the, the sort of new wave of staff in this, what, what Justin referred to earlier as the employee-based economy, where it's kind of, what are you going to do for me, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Employer? This is one of the things we can do for you. We're going to provide you with a hell of a bunch of cool tools, man. And it's up to you to use them, though, right? But we're going to give you everything you possibly need to succeed. One of the mistakes I see people make, and we even made it early, was we only wanted to provide tools to our best sellers, right? People who we knew like, could get out there and use it, the proven people, right? So that means we had like 1% of our staff using the best tools that we could provide them with, right? Well, we didn't want to invest in all of our, our new inside sellers that we just hired a month ago. Like, these, these people may not even be here in two months, so let's not give them the tools that we have to pay for yet. That's completely backwards, and it, it's taken me some time to kind of learn that. So what we've done is gone both feet in first in how we track them, but of course having to make sure everybody's on a, a level playing field using the same tools, too. So as soon as my, my newest people get hired, even inside sellers that are fresh out of college, we provide them with a premium license to, to the sales navigator, right? We're spending $1,000 a year on these people right up front before they've even touched their first phone. Right? We provide a, an email acceleration tool, which I'll talk about. We go all in. So it's not just some people that get it, everybody gets it. And then over the course of a year, they'll tell us whether or not they're going to use that tool or not. So I've got one year that I might burn some money on somebody, but the returns based on me giving everybody a chance on that are incredible, are incredible. So just sort of one tip I, I'll leave you guys with here in the middle is don't save your best tools for your best people. In fact, what we've seen with our inside sales staff is their size of deals has more than tripled through LinkedIn Sales Navigator. The ones they've sourced by using LinkedIn Sales Navigator have more than tripled versus all the other deals that get done, right? So why wouldn't we give this tool to people? They are now connecting with C-level executives that previously only my best reps who'd been here for five years could connect with, right? Because they had networks, they had been to all the chamber meetings and the networking events, and they were somebody in town. Well, now I can hire somebody, and in two seconds, on LinkedIn by doing the right searches and having the, the right looking profile, they appear as they're somebody too and they can connect with that C-level exec just as fast as somebody who's been networking for five years. So why wouldn't we want to accelerate them to that level a little bit faster, right? So just think about that. Who's got access to your best tools right now? And then how are you going to track it? There's a ton of ways you can do it and have fun with it, right? Make a game out of it. We, we, we send out rankings all the time on LinkedIn. It's become a fun competition for people internally. So I want to introduce you to some of these tools. The first one I want to talk about, uh, if I can get my slides to move. Uh, oh, actually, real quick. This one's called People Links. All right? This is a new tool. And this, this is sort of piggybacking off of how we're able to track people. Now, we're demoing this tool. We're a beta client for them right now. Um, they're going to roll it out. And it's available if you want it. But we're testing it out for, for the NBA market. What this allows me to do is track how my reps are using LinkedIn and Twitter. Right? So when they send out articles and share information through LinkedIn and Twitter through People Links, they can see how many people clicked on it, uh, what, what was their most engaged time of the day, what was their, their top engaging day, how many clicks did they get this day. And as a manager, I have a dashboard that I can see what kind of activity all my reps are doing. And I can see which of their articles that they're sending are getting the most activity, which then I can say to my other reps, hey, you should send this out too. Right? Again, that collaboration, I can see. I have transparent information here that I can share with everybody. So People Links is a fun one. It's new. Check it out if you get a chance. It's a great way to help share information, but then also track. What good is sharing it if you can't track it? Right? So if you're going to use a tool, make sure you've got a way to track it, its success as well. All right, one mob. I mentioned this one earlier. This is a fun one, too. We saw these guys at Dreamforce last year, which is the big Salesforce conference here in San Francisco, which is overwhelming in itself. But there's a couple great gems that always come out of that conference. I encourage you to go if you're into this kind of stuff. So one mob is a really simple tool that allows you from your, your smartphone to record a, a selfie video, essentially. I right? can do it right now. And maybe it's 15 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever. It interacts with your CRM system. Maybe it's Salesforce right from your phone. You can start typing in somebody's name, not their email address, but their name. And it will look in your CRM system, find that email address, plug it in. We'll send this video to them, which I'll show you in a minute. It has a branded background for, for your team. Um, and it sends them to a place where they can watch the video with an automatic reply to this person uh, form field page, all tracked back to your CRM. So I can see when somebody watched it. I can see how long they watched it and, and when they were engaged with this video. So here's an example of what a one mob looks like. All right, so that was Lisa. She, she did a one mob, right? So 
who, who gets over 100 emails a day here? Come on, probably half this room. It's got to be, right? It's so hard to figure out which of those are important and which ones are, are worth your time, right? If you got this in your inbox as a customer, you're watching it, right? It's almost hard not to. Oh, what is this? What, what am I seeing, right? This is pretty cool, right? So your goal is to try and help your rep stand out and connect with buyers in a way that they want to be connected with. This is an, an awesome opportunity to do that, OK? Um, Here's what the reply page looks like. So when somebody opens this, it'll send them to this. So it's all branded via the, your team, Kings. It's got Lisa's contact information in there. Somebody could reply to her right from there versus like opening up their Outlook or, or your, your email system to reply. Lisa can see if somebody opened it, when they opened it, how long they were, how long they were looking at that video. Very, very cool tool, OK? It gives you the rep analytics from a user level, which is really cool, OK? Uh, really inexpensive. Nothing I'm showing you today is, is more than probably 30, 40, 50 bucks a month. OK, for your users. This one's a, a really inexpensive one. Again, we, we're baiting this for folks, but they're eager to, to get in touch with people, too. I'm not endorsing any of these, by the way. I'm just showing you what we use. Uh, we try everything. Uh, another one that, that we use is called ToutApp. They have all kinds of competitors out there. Um, we've enjoyed our relationship with ToutApp. This is an email um, acceleration tool in my mind. It allows you to track from a user level, you as the rep, you as a manager, through um, a connection to your CRM system, Salesforce. It allows you to track. When you're sending an email, exactly when somebody opens it, it's a live feed on your Outlook screen. So as I'm sitting there typing away and, and multitasking, I'll have something that pop up that says, so-and-so, just watch your email. I can creepily then call them five seconds later. <laughs> Say, hey, I just noticed you opened the email I sent. No, don't do that. But there's, there's a big difference in calling somebody or emailing them maybe 10 hours after they just engage with an email you sent versus maybe 10 minutes later. That can absolutely be the difference between a sale or not, right? So why wouldn't you, if there was a tool out there that could tell you when the best time to engage with somebody was, why wouldn't you use that? Why wouldn't you give that to your team? You'll get a return on this immediately. And the rep, from, from, they have a log of every time somebody opened that email, didn't open that email. So when you call somebody and say, hey, yeah, oh, yeah, I haven't, haven't seen anything you sent, haven't heard from you. OK, <laughs> actually, in my mind, I know that you just opened that email yesterday, you liar. Um, so you can re-customize some content and provide them something maybe that was, that was more engaging. You obviously know you missed something, if they're, if, or you just know that person's not interested because they're lying to you, right? Move on, move on. So it also is, allows you to share templates. You can create email templates that you can share across your organization. So if I'm a rep and I have an email template that's working really well, hey, we, you know, we just drafted Willie Cauley Stein. Like, this is great. And I, I've developed some really good content with a cool link in there. I can see as a rep how often people are opening that. I know that that got open 70% of the time, and it has a 10% click-through rate right from the rep level. Me as a manager, I can see that across my entire organization. So I can see whose templates are working best, and then they can share them with each other. Right? Hey, I just, this template's awesome, like share to the entire team. Now I can use that same Willie Cauley sign template, which is awesome, right? It's, it's cool because the rep feels empowered. They feel, they get that sort of like kudos of doing something good because they're sharing something with everybody else that's been successful, right? Love this tool. So here's a, a quick video that, that we shot with Tad Again, I'm not really in, endorsing everybody. It's going to certainly sound like it. But we've just enjoyed our relationship with them. There are other competitors out there. So I encourage you to check it out. If you find something better, let me know. Might have to start this one. Uh oh. All right, we're going to skip that one. I'm going to go, go to Google Plus. My other videos might not be loading up here. A little worried about this. Uh, so, Google Plus is um, not something you might necessarily think about for sales, but who's used a Google Hangout before? Oh, great. Okay. Talking to friends and family, mom and dad, something like that. So, we tried this this year for renewals. Um, and I actually had a guy that we did a renewal with via Google Plus. He was sitting in his car. I logged on to my, my Google Plus video phone and literally talked him through his renewal. He was on the phone and got a whole video recording of him doing his renewal on Google Plus. The amount of people that might want to use this is very small. But again, it's just another tool in that tool belt that can allow people to be successful, right? So Google Plus is something I would encourage you guys to check out if you have trouble getting people a hold of people via email or via phone. Hey, how about video chat? Right? Can't come down here to the arena? How about a video chat? How about I walk you through the arena with my phone on you know, Skype or you know, uh, a FaceTime or, or Google Hangout? Right? I'll make this convenient for you to buy. Right? So that's just the opportunity to give your buyers a way to interact with you in a way that's most convenient for them. I don't think these videos are going to work. I think we have a, a, maybe a trouble with our internet connection. There's a video of uh, us doing a Google Hangout, which I'll, I'll show you guys or send you guys, post on my LinkedIn later. 
Um, here's this really cool thing that we did. So again, we're always trying to find a way to use technology to make our team better, right? This is that acceleration that we talked about. So for us, we found this company called Sociometrics. They are an MIT company um, that make these really cool devices, which you see down there on the left. It's a little badge. It kind of looks like a heart monitor if you wear it. We contracted this company to come on out and outfit a bunch of our reps with these badges. And what it does is it actually tracks their movement and it tracks their, their audio tones, right? The, the uh, rise and fall of their voice, if they're talking near somebody else who's wearing a badge, all that kind of stuff, right? We were able to do this for about six weeks with a, a pilot program and put it back to some sales data versus what we had in CRM, versus the time that they are wearing this and the types of sales and when they were closed, right? We were able to pull some really cool information from this. Sounds creepy, I know, right? We, we can't actually track what they're saying, we just track how they say it in terms of, of the tone. So we didn't like record anybody's, anybody's conversations. But what it told us was all kinds of great information. One of the key learnings we got from that was that our top sales reps, our most senior sales reps, weren't spending enough time talking to our newest people, right? Really important, really important to make sure that we have our best people passing on learnings to our, our newest people. So we found that it, it would be important for us to try and link these people back together. So from this data, we created a mentorship program. We actually just rolled out a couple weeks ago where every one of our inside sales reps now has a mentor, a, 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 somebody who's been there out, not in the, um, the inside sales program. They have a one-on-one -on -one mentor now, right? This was our way of almost forcing this interaction so that our best people were passing on some of that knowledge, some of those skills to our newest people. And when you look back to Justin's presentation, what's important to these new people, it's skill development, right? Um, this is a great way to do that. It's a great way to make those, make those people interact. We wouldn't have probably had this thought unless we had some data that told us that. Really crazy technology. Um, they're talking about using this for players and, and all kinds of stuff too. So it was fun for us to get to test it as a sales organization. Um, YouTube, uh, because our connection I don't think is working here, uh, it's probably gonna not work for me to show you this part of the presentation. Um, but we've created this thing called a seat viewer. You feel free to jump in here and try it, but we've created this thing called a seat viewer. We actually went out, and you guys have all seen the 3D technology and stuff, which is cool, but we wanted our reps to have a little fun with this. We wanted to engage them in this. So we let them go out with their iPhones from each section in the arena, and they recorded um, a little 15 second blurb on, hey, I'm in section 115 right now. Here's the seats that are available. There's only five seats left in this section. They're gonna go really fast. Our fans love this because it's behind the home bench. You should check this out. And we created a whole channel where we posted one of those videos from every section, right? So it's a little bit more than those 3D viewers. I actually have somebody talking to me and telling me all about this. We now send a link to this in every proposal that we create. So when we send out a, a proposal to a customer, we link to the section view. Right? So if I know I'm, I'm pitching them section 115, I send them a link, hey, check out these seats right here. And I've, it's almost like they're in the arena. It's like I'm giving them an arena tour from the comfort of their own home. This has been wildly successful for us. Something so simple that cost us nothing to do this. I would encourage you guys all to check this out. Um, so here's where the video would have been. I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, so that's okay. So here's another one called, still trying. That's okay, we'll, we'll move on. Um, this one's called Dial Source, all right? Dial source is a really cool uh, dialing accelerator. Again, they have competitors out there, and there are other people that do this, but, but we've enjoyed our relationship with them. This allows our reps to make about 10 times as many dials per hour as you would traditionally make. So the cold call is dead, but the phone call isn't, right? So what dial source allows us to do is take our analytics that we've done through our CRM system, uh, where we scored a bunch of leads. We might put 5,000 leads into a pool. Every one of those leads is scored. And dial source takes that scoring and it has logic behind it. So when the reps log into this pool to call out of the 5,000, they're always getting the top potential lead to call based on the score that we have. And if I call that person, and based on what happened, maybe I left them a voicemail or maybe I had a conversation, that lead may or may not recycle at a certain point. Maybe I want that lead to be called two or three times as many based on times as other leads based on its score. So maybe it recycles really high in the list versus another one once I leave the message, it might go all the way down to the bottom of the list. All of that is um, predictive technology that's been built into this dialing system. It takes the manual dial out of the rep's hand. They literally just log into the pool and they get a screen pop. Uh, and what's happening is it's dialing like 10 numbers at once. And it's gonna connect them with the first one that gets a live conversation. And if it's a voicemail, they literally just press a button 
to leave a pre-recorded voicemail that they can record that day and they can have 10 different types of it, right? When they start that voicemail, they're moving on to the next call. So that saves you 10, 20, 15, 30 seconds as that voicemail is being left, you've already moved on to the next call. So this kind of technology is the stuff we're looking for to accelerate our reps' performance, right? And the idea behind this is that we're giving them the absolute best tools that are available, right? Why wouldn't you give your rep something that could make them more successful? So this is another great tool. Uh, there's a great video. I encourage you to check it out. It's on my LinkedIn page. Uh, I may pull them up here real quick just, just so you can see them right after this. So sales 3.0 supported is, is a really big deal for, for me and my entire staff. This doesn't work if you are sitting in a back office and never talking to your team about it. Again, if you just send them, say, hey, you guys use YouTube. Like, what does that mean to them? You have to do constant training. So you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever it is, we try and get in front of our staff. I sit down in a screen sharing application and I'll go through how to build a good LinkedIn brand, right? Or I'll, I'll go through how to use one of these new tools that we're giving them. They can see it on their screens. Uh, we we kind of have fun out of it, get on a microphone and, and play a little music in the background. You've got to be out front and, and using these tools with them. So if, if I'm doing one mob, I'm going to record one of me first. I'm going to send it to my staff and say, hey, how'd you guys like to try something like this? Right? You have to be the one that's leading the charge on this or it will fall into fears. They won't believe it if you don't believe it. And there's just so much to do, it can be really overwhelming. So that's why I want to show you a few of the tools today. Um, if you guys have two seconds, I'm going to pull up these videos and I can take a, a couple quick questions. Do we have internet, Troy? Or actually, can you pull up the, the, web, the web? That internet thing? Uh, well, she's doing that. What questions have I maybe prompted about sales 3.0 or, or any of these tools? Yeah, so Bill. It's very minimal. It's, it's not enough that would trigger somebody on the other end to think that they're being like robo-called, right? It's a great question, great question. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because every game's only sold out for so long, right? At some point, that goes away. Or hopefully, if every game's sold out, you're, you're selling something else. Right, you're moving on to another product, which Paul you know, talked about, how they're selling tours and, and tailgates and all these different things, right? There's always a, a reason for you to engage in a relationship with, with your fans. Even, if, even from a renewal standpoint, we use this for renewals too. Boy, that's a good question. It's probably between LinkedIn and dial source. Uh, we are well above $500,000 from LinkedIn. Now again, we're buying a, a annual subscription for every rep we have, so you're talking fifty, sixty thousand dollars annually for this, right? But I'm, I'm, we've had it for about a year and a half. We've taken, taken home almost five hundred grand already. So I mean, you know, do the math. We're, we're usually in a five to ten to one ROI. If I can get five to one on any of these tools, I'm, I'm a happy camper, right? And I still feel like we're just scratching the surface on these. When they really figure out how to, how to use these, um, there's more, there's more where that came from. And Dial Source is a UC Davis grad, um, you know, alumni based company and probably going to be one of the first Fortune 1000s in Sacramento. They're, they're doing good things and, and they're eager to work with people. Um, so if you guys get a chance and, and would like to check them out, you should. They're, they're very eager to get into the sports industry. So I'm going to pull up my LinkedIn page, which hopefully you guys have been sitting at your desk and have taken a look at while we're sitting here. I'm going to pull up a couple of these videos just for a second. It'll, give you a little more insight and visual um, into what, uh, if I can find the video, what some of these tools actually look like. Any other questions while I'm typing this in? They are only Salesforce right now. They're in the process of working with Microsoft CRM. From what I understand, it's the next 30 to 60 days yeah, they should it will have be. that component. It'll, it'll be there soon. All right, let's see if we can pull this off. And I don't own any. We just wild idea. What if we made oral care products that were friendly, effective, delicious, and beautiful? beautiful. Well, finally, you here they are. You should try Hello Natural well, Friendly or, Oral Care. Sweeteners, dyes, triclosan, and microbeads. Yeah. Support our proud sponsors. And clinically proven formulas. That prevent cavities. Polished teeth. <laughs> and yes, fresh and breath. Plus, we never test on animals. And we're made in the USA. So join us. And say hello to naturally friendly oral care goodness from Hello. I didn't know it existed. Brush free. Every day. And choose friend. Hello. Hello.
Hello. Okay. Let's hope that My name is Phil it. Horn. I am the vice president of Ticket. Oh. Awesome. My presentation on sales and services. I decided to pursue a career in sales at a young age because I actually realized that I had fun interacting with people. And I didn't want to be somebody who necessarily just worked in a cubicle by myself with headphones on all day. I wanted to be out talking to people. Working in sports obviously gives me the amazing opportunity to do that. It was 17,317 people in our building every single night. We've assembled one of the most talented groups of sales professionals in the sports industry, and my job is to lay out the strategy. What we realized was there was a real need for us to understand when the right time to respond to somebody after communicating with them through technology was. It's how that fills that need for us, because we can track live when people are reading our emails, when they're clicking on particular links. And if we find that something's working and we want to replicate it, they can share these templates over and over and over and we continue to refine things that we find work to communicate with our clients across the board. I think the one thing that can really jeopardize success in a sales organization is to remove the human element from the actual sellers. But with Taudat, it actually puts that power back in the hands of the reps. We think that we can strengthen the bond with our customers by providing them a more personalized, effortless experience through the use of the technology, getting to know them better, understanding what they like, what they dislike. We're in a constant search for the latest and greatest technology, the next practice, to enable our sales team to stand out. All right, guys. One, two, three. Peace. All right, good luck tonight, everybody. Our owner, Vivek Ramadeva, wants us to stay two seconds ahead of the next decision. And we feel like the use of next generation technology, like Tout App, allows us to do that. All right, so that's, that's Tout App, uh, which is a fun one. Um, yeah, fire away. Say that one more time, if they open. Sounds like you should be in the office. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if, that's a great learning, right? If we're wasting our time in the office trying to call people between 9 and 10 o'clock every day, maybe we need to revise how we're doing things. Like, if that's the time they're opening our emails, maybe we should be scheduling a power hour between 8 and 9 o'clock. And, you know, like, I can see that. I can see when the most active time is, and it actually generally is between 9 and 10, which might be pushing it a little bit. Um, but why not try something like that, right? It's a great idea. Like, maybe I should have the reps come in at 8.30 one night and hit those people who, who've opened those emails to see if we get a little bit more engagement. I'm, I'm going to find you, actually, on that. Well, so anyway, they would go to your LinkedIn to find the other uh, Yeah, there's videos. a bunch of them on here. Um, I think we're, are we out of time? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's one on the, uh, the Google Plus renewal up there. All kinds of fun stuff. So thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it.